another episode of the Learn Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clemenson, and today we are joined by the one and only Roger Christie. Roger, welcome. Thank you, Brett. Really kind. Now, let's introduce you real quick for everyone at home. You founded and run a company called Propel, and Propel really is about digital reputation. And off the back of that, you also run a podcast and a newsletter, which is called Your Digital Reputation, and recently have just launched an online program called LinkedIn for Leaders. So for everyone at home, predominantly recruiters and in sales, we're going to get into the theme of why is your digital reputation so important? We know it. I mean, we know it, but are you doing it right? Like that's, this is kind of what we're going to dig into. And Roger's a master. He, he set me off on my journey years ago. Um, did a great session, a couple of sessions with our crew. And, and look, we were just talking about it before. And I was just saying, look, all these wins we've had off the back of all that stuff we've done with yeah, you from awesome. LinkedIn. Yeah, like, you know, some of our legal recruiters are getting literal partner referrals and active candidates off the back of this stuff. I'm getting brand new global clients from the ba- off the back of this stuff, like stuff that we, our activities, our usual headhunt calls or our marketing calls couldn't get. So it's quite interesting that, you know, fast forward two years, we're going, this is, this is a dream, right? Like this is, this awesome. is why you do it. How, yeah. do we, how do we get you guys from here to there within the digital realm? So I guess my first question to you is, is like, why does it matter? Like wh- why does digital reputation mean anything? Like, why do I need it? So you, know, you t- talked about a couple of things there, Brett, the, where we start our online program, the, the LinkedIn for Leaders program that you're talking about, I think one of the very first lines is people are Googling you every single day. Yep. And when we accept that reality, mm. what's the importance of a digital reputation is just so bleedingly obvious. Because the first port of call for anyone today is your smartphone. Uh, whether I've met someone in person, I want to go and validate who they are and what they just told me. Whether it's someone I may have heard may have heard on a podcast, someone I may have heard speak at an event, someone who's someone else in my trusted circle goes, hey, go and check out Brett. Mm. The first thing I do is go to Google. And so what that person sees when they do that search, when they write in Brett Clements and they go, who, who's this guy? What's he about? What they see is your digital reputation. So why it matters, <laughs> and you've done, a lot of work, no, you've done a lot of work over the past couple of years, which has put you in really good stead. But what people see is information like there's Google search is never blank. So they find information online. The thing about a digital reputation is whether you're active or not and whether you like it or not, you have one. Mm. The challenge is how much control do you want to have over your narrative? So people are going to keep searching. People will keep Googling. People will keep finding information out about you. And the question we all need to answer is how much skin in the game do I want to have? How much control over that process? How positive do I want those digital first impressions to be? That, that's the line that always stuck with me. It's like, I remember you did a great example of when you Googled yourself and it was yeah. some serial killer came up and <laughs> everyone was like... Close, yeah. yeah. Was it something like that? A, a cannabis minister in uh, in Hawaii and, uh, yeah, the other Roger Christie, my alter ego. Uh, it's it's a great story, honestly. It's a ripping <laughs> it's, story. It's you couldn't make right? it up. No, you yeah. couldn't. So, I mean, that's it, right? Whether you Whether you participate or not, whether you want to or not, you have a digital reputation. That's huge. And I think there are still a lot of recruiters here or salespeople who just think, oh, I do my in-mails, I like stuff, that's enough. Is it? Like, is it? So the thing about a digital reputation, and this is where LinkedIn comes in. Why is the program focused on LinkedIn? It's really important to understand the link between those two. And to your point at the start too, everyone gets LinkedIn. Everyone mm. knows that LinkedIn's there, but mm. how well am I really using it? So going back to that scenario, people are Googling your name. The first thing they see, more often than not, unless you're a celebrity, an author, or a politician, one of those kind of uh, sorts of uh, industries or, or roles and professions, for the majority of professionals, the first thing you'll see is their LinkedIn profile. Why is that so important? It's important because it's the first asset that you have and you control, mm-hmm. and it's dynamic. Mm-hmm. So it means that at any point of the day, you can go and share your thoughts about something via your own LinkedIn profile by posting something. So when someone comes, does that Google search and they see your profile and they go in, they see what Brett thinks, they see what Brett's about. If you're not harnessing that asset, your LinkedIn profile still comes up. Mm. But if it's dormant, if it's outdated, if it has an egg for a profile photo rather than your smiling face, (laughs) and these things are really common, if you don't have that, if you're not harnessing the Mm. opportunity there, the impression you're leaving people with is not going to encourage them to connect, convert, to collaborate, all these things that come off the back of it. Those commercial opportunities are lost. Mm. So I suppose connecting into that why it's so important and why LinkedIn is so important in that, you've got to understand how the LinkedIn system works Mm. so that you can harness the opportunities of that digital reputation. Because otherwise, yeah, 
other people are controlling your narrative or people are just breezing past you. They're looking past you for those opportunities you'd otherwise get. Yeah. And look, I, I think it's it's surface value LinkedIn so simple. Yeah. The moment you start to scratch and go deeper, you go, it gets very complicated very quickly. Um, what are like, to, to, to simplify things, like what are the common things that people are getting wrong today? Yeah, gr- you know? so great example. So we just talked there about the, the scenario, the workflow of someone coming across you looking at your profile. Mm. And when it comes to profile, some of the most common things I see is that people don't understand how how their profile appears publicly. So when you and anyone logs into LinkedIn, you see a certain version of the universe, right? You mm. see um, an inside version of your profile. Well, you, you reached out to us the other day and said Pete was a – he didn't have a picture. I wasn't going to call out Pete, but you've done it. So I've done fine. it. Pete, <laughs> Pete didn't have a picture. I didn't see it because I'm inside the in the belly. This is it. And right. so when you're looking at someone from the outside um, – and actually, shout out to my wife, Jam. She was the one who spotted that one. Mm. But when you look from the outside in, you see things differently. And this is what we don't remember. Mm. The people who are looking at us online, like you and I know one another. I'm not going to your LinkedIn profile to see what Brett's up to. I'm seeing your content in my feed, but I know you. I trust you already, Mm. so that's fine. These are the people who are potentially getting to our front door and stopping and turning around and walking away. Mm. It's the people on the outside. And so when someone comes and looks at Pete, hypothetically, from the outside in, and they see that Pete has no profile photo. He looks dodgy ass. Exactly. He looks dodgy ass. Is this the real Pete? Dodgy Pete. Pete? Is this the real Pete? Is this someone I should trust? Is Mm. this someone who, particularly when we're talking about a career, which is a really uh, sensitive, important, emotional thing that that we're all investing our time and money into, Mm. am I going to trust someone who's faceless, literally faceless? So simple things like that, your public profile visibility is a big one for me. Mm -hmm. The other ones, are, uh, I suppose, your listeners might hear this and be like, oh, bugger, I've been doing this sort of stuff. Reposting. Reposting Mm. is rife on LinkedIn. Is it good or bad? It's a terrible idea. Okay. And and the reason why, so I'll give you an example from one of our clients. I was working with a a senior leader and uh, and he had roughly around 10,000 followers. So this isn't someone who is Mm. just, you know, rats and mice LinkedIn. He did a repost one time, and we did, this is part of a broader analysis of his content. He did a repost that performed so poorly, it literally got nine impressions. 10,000 followers, Yeah, a reposted piece of content wow. generated nine impressions. Now, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to work out that's a terrible return on investment. And so we dug a bit deeper, and we worked out that roughly your reposted content can perform 250 times worse than original content. Wow. Yeah, what's really interesting about this, particularly in larger organisations, not so much to the individual, but larger organisations have these workflows and policies that say company page is going to post and I want you guys to repost it. And so they're actually shooting themselves in the foot and you as the individual are not getting any reach or visibility Mm. with your key audiences. So, yeah, key lesson, don't repost. It doesn't work. That's a really interesting one because you would think that LinkedIn as a platform wouldn't really care. They like just keep people on. I suppose they want originality, right? So this is it. So why do they care? So mm. LinkedIn as a commercial platform is built on attention, as a lot of yep. social media platforms are. So the more attention they have, the more time investment you give the platform, obviously the more invested as a user you are, the higher our advertising rates are going to be, the mm. more marketing space I can yep. sell. So if you think about it, if I go through my feed and I see seven posts that are exactly the same, what am I going to do? I'm gone. See you later. I'm mm. logged out of the app and I'm gone. Mm. If I see seven original pieces of content that are interesting for me, I'm more likely to stay, spend time on them, invest my time and therefore invest time in the platform. Suddenly the price goes up. So if we understand the commercial mechanics of LinkedIn, we can then use that system to our advantage. Amazing. So again, in the in the theme of being super, super practical, yeah. right? Is there like a, an ABC checklist that you run through at the beginning when you, let's just say I'm a, Roger, I need help, Roger. I don't know if I'm good or bad. What's your checklist? What do you do? Like, what are we doing? So the first thing I do is say, definitely Google yourself. (laughs) Okay, yep, yep, yep. (laughs) Definitely Google yourself and see what's out there. And what I'd encourage people to to do as well is we don't often think about this. Make sure you're Googling yourself in private browser or incognito mode because otherwise you're seeing a warped version. You're seeing a um, a tainted version of your uh, your profile online. So do that search and just get an idea of how lay people are seeing you, people from the outside looking in. Then when it comes to your LinkedIn profile, the biggest thing you can do, and I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to blow this out of proportion, the most important thing you can spend any time on, it's not how to write the perfect viral post. It's not how to make your profile look amazing and, you know, airbrush your photos or whatever it is. Mm. The most important thing you can do is to spend time working out why you're using LinkedIn. That sounds really kind of, 
yeah, a bit ethereal and a bit of kind of, yeah, mm. great, give me something more tangible and practical, Rog. What we do is an exercise called the Purpose Pyramid Exercise. Mm-hmm. And what it does, it connects your goals as a, um, an individual or if you're you know, an employee within an organisation, connecting the dots between the inst- institute and the individual. Mm-hmm. Then we work out your key audiences. Mm-hmm. So who are the people that matter most to you in reaching those goals, those career goals that you have? And the final part of the pyramid is passions. So when you go goals, audiences and passions – Passions are really important because that's your unique story. That's you. When you think about LinkedIn, Mm. there are a billion other people out Mm. there using this platform. There's a lot of noise, as you know, and as others know, there's a lot of noise on LinkedIn. Mm. How on earth do you get cut through in that? How How do you stand out? How do you differentiate? It actually comes down to your passions. And often we feel so uncomfortable talking about who we are, being authentic, if I can use Opening that term. Up. Yeah. Mm. And this isn't about being gushy and overly emotional and, and vulnerable and all that sort of stuff. If that's you, that's fine. Mm. And I'd say actually you're a great <coughs> – people who are listening obviously know that, but you're a great example of someone – you're the same online as you are offline. Yeah. That's what I preach. It actually throws people. The amount of people I interview <laughs> and they go, you're literally the same person <laughs> in real life as you are on the podcast. And that's what you should be. And how old are you? And I'm like <laughs> – I'm turning 40 this year. They're like, you act like a 20-year-old. No, I'll take that as a compliment. Thank you. Online or offline, <laughs> yeah, though, yeah, you're yeah. consistent. And, and why is that so important? Mm. Because if you project this image of being a 20-year-old offline and yet you try to be a 40-year-old online, as an example, exactly. Very, very serious podcast. You did take mm. a suit and tie off just before I noticed. But ah, <laughs> <laughs> lies, <laughs> lies. So if, you're, if you pretend to be something you're not mm. in, in either domain, these worlds are blended yeah. today. You get caught out very You quick. get caught out. Yep. And then what happens? Any, any inconsistency or incongruence breeds distrust. Mm. It's credibility erosion. Because mm. what I've said in one domain suddenly doesn't hold water in the other and the whole thing falls down. Mm. So it's really important that you do turn up as yourself. So again, why that purpose pyramid is such an important practical exercise. Work out your goals. Work out why am I using LinkedIn and what am I actually trying so to So if achieve. you're a recruiter, right, yeah. your goal is to be a market expert, your goal is to make placements. So you've Bingo. got clients to consider yep. and you've got a candidate audience to consider. You've got kind of got two two realms here, right? Correct. And where do you see yourself in three to five years' time as well? So you can focus mm. on those um, might be 12-month goals, actual numbers and targets you want to hit. And you can also look further afield and say, I actually want to start my own practice. I actually want to do these things mm. and, and set those goals further. Then, as you just rightly point out, come to audiences there is a direct link between your goals and what you want to achieve and the audiences you need to come with you on that journey. Mm. Too often on LinkedIn, what I see is people who, um, they might be living in the past. So we all have people in our network from previous roles and whatnot, or even different countries, different mm. markets. And you'll see that people gravitate towards the old and the familiar and they engage with that old world, people who are you know part of their past life, as opposed to looking forward. So when you set goals as part of that purpose pyramid, when you set goals for LinkedIn, your audiences are the people that are going to be relevant for you in the future. And you start thinking about how do I need to build relationships with those people right? using LinkedIn to open doors mm. so that I can access people I otherwise couldn't. How do I use them to actually set myself up for the future and achieving so, those so goals? So we've gone on that. We've gone completely over here. I thought we we're going to go down here, but this is great. <laughs> and when I say, when I started by saying, yeah, now, what's that checklist we go through? And, mm. and, and the number one thing for you is actually just to find your purpose, your why, and, and what, which, are, which is phenomenal. I don't yeah. think you hear a lot of that no. through recruitment um, sort of programs and whatnot. Yeah. It's always about like technical like yeah. deliverables, like do this, do that. Da, exactly. da, but this is more like only you can answer this stuff. Um, but then what I've just heard now, mm. uh, now there's two prongs coming out of this <clears throat> once you've determined that. It's if you if you we don't want to look to the past mm. and and engage. You said the word engage mm. with the past because mm-hmm. we're going to stay in the past, right? Yep. So if you want it, so there's the engagement factor. So if I want to get there, I have to start. Are you saying engaging with correct that path? Yeah, engaging with that. So let's just say I want to be the president yep. of America. Yep. Um, I have to find Trump. Yep. I have to start engaging with. Him. I have to find everyone in Congress and start engaging with them. Yep. Is that what you're saying? And then the second prong. You've got engagement, but then you've also got content creation. Mm-hmm. Is that important? Yep. So okay. the, I think the way you've actually described it, that one-two combination is really important. And mm-hmm. I'd actually add a first one if I can. So by 
being really clear on my purpose, I'm designing that future, right? I'm saying this is where I want to be. Mm -hmm. Then exactly right. The first thing I'm going to do is actually identify who are the key influencers, who are the key people, either the Trumps of the world, the people who are already in those roles, or the people who are influencers, advocates, um, allies, referrers, door openers to that world, those sorts of people. Identify who those key opinion leaders are. They're the people I want to be associating with. I am using LinkedIn as an intelligence feed, as a sponge to soak up all the goodness that these people are talking about. Why? Because that's the intel that's going to help inform the next post I make. It helps inform the next comment I make. So I am cool by association with the people who are already playing in the space I mm. want to be. So, yeah, you've got to build your network in the direction you're heading. Then you've got to immerse yourself in the conversations those people are having. And then you participate. Then you comment. Then you engage. Mm. Then you build those connections. And then your last point around the content is spot on. Once I've got all that intel, once I've actually told the LinkedIn algorithm who's important to me, and I'm, I'm sitting there literally soaking up their content day in, day out in my LinkedIn feed. How much better place am I to write an informed, really pithy comment or post that resonates yeah. with that audience? You know, it's a, it's a digital version of what they say that you are, you are the, five mo- the, the, the five people you hang out with the most is who you become. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, it's the same for LinkedIn. You don't have to physically be in the room, but if you're soaking up their feeds, soaking up their intel, yep. soaking up how they talk, their lingo, their yep. bits – Makes sense. And you know what's awesome about that is the fact that we talk about digital being an isolating and exclude, exclusive environment. It's not. It's so democratic and it's so mm-hmm. open. You can access if you wanted to. I'm not saying you do, but if you wanted to be the president this, of the this, United States. This sounds <laughs> illegal. You, do, you could access Donald Trump. This is the thing. Yeah. You can literally sit there on his shoulder and listen to every single word that comes out of his mouth digitally. Oh, God, you'd be so bad for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrifying idea. We're going to build a wall. But the, <laughs> <laughs> but the point is that you've got access to these people that you, you literally cannot access physically mm. in the real world. Mm. So if you can do that digitally, you suddenly have an unfair advantage over every other person who is trying to get to your future position by using the tools at your disposal to absorb the intel, build the relationships, build the credibility, and then mm. suddenly the day you pop up and start talking about the things that will position you as a thought leader and an expert in that space, you've already got the infrastructure around you. Mm. So... I th- this is phenomenal. I'm, I'm. If no one gets to anything out of this, I don't care because I'm getting heaps <laughs> out of this. Right? <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there are a lot of people who'll be listening to this going, "That sounds like a lot of freaking hard yeah, work." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it probably is, right? Yeah. Like, no, it's not. It's no, not? no, 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 no. No, and I'll, I'll challenge that. And, uh, I, and okay. the reason I will challenge it is because uh, if you're listening to this and you have spent, well, I don't know. If you are listening to this, think about how much time you would spend on LinkedIn every week. Just think about that as a rough number. It doesn't matter. If you Creating think or consuming? Anything. Anything. Just any app, app. any just activity okay. that you do on LinkedIn. And if we say it's a couple of hours, let's just pick a random number just for the sake of that. Some people will do more, some people will do less. But if I spend one to two hours every week on LinkedIn, I could spend one to two hours on LinkedIn doing absolutely nothing. I can spend one to two hours on LinkedIn heading a very quick way in the wrong direction. Mm. The purpose of this purpose-led approach to LinkedIn is actually to stop set the correct direction, and then make sure I'm investing any time and energy that moves me closer to that goal. So while, yeah, no one likes stopping and setting strategy. No one does. It's like, no, but I just want to get on with it, right? I've or, got the, I've got the or you've got hand. the other side, people who love strategy and no action. Yeah, exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So what this will do, it, it covers both bases because it makes sure that you are clear on where you're heading. Mm. And then I guarantee it, and I've seen this with even the most reluctant CEOs, when you plan that, um, that roadmap for them, uh, through the purpose pyramid, and then you start implementing it. Their feed gets filled with people that they really want to hear from. Mm. They naturally spend more time in the environment because they're getting so much from it. That's true. So even yeah. people who are reluctant to participate and put that strategy mm. into into action, it sells them. It sells itself. So this is one of those things that if you stop, and I'm talking half an hour. Mm. I'm not talking spend seven hours working out your LinkedIn strategy. No, no, no. If you do the purpose pyramid exercise, it'll take you half an hour to work out goals, audiences, passions. Then once you've done that, I'm, I'm not kidding you. I know people go, yeah, whatever. Five to 15 minutes a day. Mm. Five to 15 minutes a day absorbing what is now really rich, insightful, helpful, relevant content from people. Mm-hmm. And the other good news, stop spending time posting every day. Instead, spend time listening and engaging every day. Mm. So my rule for leaders and, and anyone listening to this podcast, my rule for you, nine to one. 
nine to one engagement to post ratio. So what does that mean? It means for every 10 activities you do on LinkedIn, nine of those should be engaging with other people. One of those should be your own original content. Why? Why is that a sensible thing to do? Because if you think about it, (laughs) it is easier. No, it is. It's easier and it makes sense. So when you said this is time intensive, I've actually given people back time. Mm. So rather than having to write 10 posts and sit there and go, what am I going to write this week? Rather than doing that, instead I'm saying, no, no, no. The audience that's out there that you've already told LinkedIn is relevant to you, Mm. you're now spending your time simply listening, absorbing and engaging with them. Why is that important? One, you're going to fill your head with really good stuff, mm. providing you've identified the right audience. Oh, this is just so good. I, there's a, <laughs> there are people in my office, right, who still resist um, LinkedIn as a, like, I'm going to put myself out there. And there's this real block about it. And, every, the and there'll be so many people that's here the, the same, right? They'll have the same barrier. So that's what you've just given us is a license to say that's okay. Yep. And I love this approach because you're saying – just quickly set your agenda. Like, what's the course we want to go on? So, like, we want to go that way with our desk, with our clients, with our accounts, with our market, whatever. Work that out. And I think most people will know it because they, they, recruiters are very good at going to my lane, right? So you probably already have a pretty good feed. I'd go one step further and maybe nourish your mind with as many recruitment leaders as you can. Obviously, you're listening to us, but, like, we all know the usual. Go overseas as well. There's some great ones in America, some great ones in Europe, and just, you know, outside your lane stuff. And that's what we always try to do. Then... If you don't want to post, listen. I love this listening, but mm. not just listen, start to engage. And mm-hmm. how many times I've engaged and I've gone, that would be a great post. Mm. My answer is is a post. Yep. That happens a lot, right? And what I'd say there's two, two, 100%, there's two mm. responses to that though. One is when you think of that comment and you go, that would make a great post, don't listen to LinkedIn and start or share that post as a repost. Don't do it. Oh, <laughs> yes. LinkedIn it prompts does you. Do it, that, says, it? it says start a conversation with and this that, post. That, that shit? It doesn't work. All oh. you've done, literally all you've done as far as the algorithm and how it works is you've donated all your goodwill and equity to the other person. So, and I'm not tr- saying this despite the other person. people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it despite them. What I'm saying yeah. is your original thought and original idea Deserves to stand on its own two feet. Okay. So don't donate that to other people. So that's point number one. Great tip. Yeah. If you've got a good meaty comment that starts a post, start an original post. Give credit to them in the post. That's fine. Totally fine. But don't repost. Mm. The second thing is, and this is the opposite and far more common reality. So you're more com- you're more comfortable in this space. So I imagine a lot of people listening are going, yeah, I comment, but the majority of my comments are like, congratulations, bravo, well done, you're awesome, you're amazing. No thought. No thought. Mm. Um, it's, it's empty noise. Mm. And... What I would say to people who find it difficult to go that step further with comments is think about it this way. Every single comment that you make on LinkedIn is a little digital breadcrumb that Mm. shows people elements of your character. So if they want to know the depth of your relationship with a candidate, if they want to know the depth of your understanding on a certain issue, they're going to get squat from the word congratulations. Instead, if you go that little bit deeper, you show the personal connection you have with someone, you show their intimate understanding of their journey and what they've been through to achieve a certain role, or the depth of understanding of an industry and what's happening there. Do that in your comments because why? One, as I said, little digital breadcrumbs. Mm. And two, guess who sees those comments? Mm. The people who are part of the networks of the post, the poster that you just shared that comment under. See. You're getting direct exposure to new people who are relevant and associated with you. That's a beast. <laughs> That's a huge opportunity. Oh, nine that. to one. Remember, nine to one engagement ratio. Nine to one engagement yep, ratio. It's a golden ratio. Okay. My habit, I, and for me, all this stuff is about just anchoring it around habits you already do. It's so much easier to do it that way. So, yeah. like, I try and do a post every day just to just to get out there and just be seen. But then I hang my, – my thing is do the post and then hang around for 10 minutes. So, in hanging around, I'm just scrolling, commenting, liking, whatever. So, I would say there's my nine. Is it okay? You're okay with that? So, what I'd suggest is before – if you've got a major post to make. So, if you're – again, you find this very all comfortable. All my posts are major. <laughs> <laughs> the, the medal tally. I love the gold medal tally update yeah. from the Olympics. So I was, I was literally chuffed this morning when I put that post up. I'm like, bloody Australia doing so well in the Olympics. Punching above our Come weight. Come on. 100%. So above our weight. So wait for track and field. Anyway, <laughs> no, no. Well, I think you are naturally more comfortable in doing that. And, mm. and it's, it's muscle memory for you. You've yeah. already overcome a lot of those barriers. Yeah. Who I'm talking to are the people who are going, geez, I don't know what to say in that one post. And it's taking me hours or I'm literally paralyzed because I can't write it. So don't. Write the nine engagements, comments, reactions, private messages, that sort of stuff. Do that first. Mm. Through immersion in other people's comments and other people's posts, you will get the ideas and the confidence to then post yourself. I love it. So I don't mind posting and then sticking around. I think that's a brilliant idea because it Mm -hmm. pumps up the algorithm. Mm -hmm. Again, Mm -hmm. every reaction and every interaction with your post, including your own, Mm -hmm. 
is going to help that post reach more people. So mm-hmm. that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. But also spend time, uh, what I call like fertilizing the ground, mm-hmm. going and finding those key people, those key audiences, and engage with their content before your big post. Mm. Because they are the ones who will then see your big post if you've done that ahead of time. I love it. Okay, a couple of random questions coming to my mind. Yeah. Hashtags, so how old any weight anymore? Yeah, hasht- yeah, it's a really good question. Hashtags yeah. are an evolving um, feature at the yeah. moment, or maybe it's devolving, I'm not sure. They've put less emphasis. LinkedIn has put less emphasis without making an official comment on whether they're, they're going to survive or die. I dropped so, them to, to test it and it hasn't really changed yeah, anything. Yeah, and, I just and, figure it's a wider audience without them. And your experience is pretty consistent. Mm. They've made no official statement. So watch yeah. this space. But it used to be the the – you know, basic rule of three to five hashtags is yep. a good number, blending relevance and popularity. So mm-hmm. if you get those two, you hit your sweet spot. Um, but watch this space. I'm, I'm not convinced. I don't think they'll get rid of them altogether because it's still a good way to um, thematically or topically group content. Mm-hmm. But they're losing importance. Interesting. Um, in two years ago to today, mm-hmm. I just get a sense when I look through LinkedIn, it's freaking noisy now. You've mm-hmm. got your Gary V's of the world going, saying the same as you, get like 11 pieces of content out a day or, you know, 100,000 bits of content out a week. Like this insanity, right? And um, I scroll through now and I, I get this overwhelming sense of this a lot of advertising, a lot of like shouting, a lot of like it's quite noisy compared to what it was two years ago. Is that just me? Am I just, what am I seeing? So so the, the truth is that there is um, already an increasing amount of ads over the past two years. So you're not wrong there. There is okay. an increased number of ad, ads that go out there. In terms of your feed, let's just call it roughly two-thirds organic content, one-third ads. It's probably a little bit more than that for ads, but mm-hmm. roughly speaking. So accept that reality. We cannot change that. LinkedIn is a commercial entity. It needs to make money for Microsoft. So that's the truth. Oh, we love Microsoft. <laughs> Bill Gates needs more money. <laughs> However, what I will say about feeds, you are what you eat on LinkedIn. So what that means is if you spend your time as you're navigating or thumbing through your feed, doom scrolling, if you will, if you're going through your LinkedIn feed and you're just stopping, reading, stopping, reading, liking, random, whatever it is, back in those, that past network that we were talking about, mm-hmm. you're doing all that stuff. What you're telling the algorithm is that you have no idea who your key audience is and you're actually engaging with a whole group of random people. Maybe because mm-hmm. you're trying to appeal to a wide range of people or maybe because you just genuinely have so many people that you want to keep in touch with on LinkedIn. But unfortunately, the the algorithm, the system can only take so much information at one time. Mm -hmm. So we need to be very intentional with our engagement in order to get a very clean feed. So without labeling your engagement efforts, Mm -hmm. if you're spending time engaging with a wide ranging random group of people, it's very likely that your feed is then going to be noisy because LinkedIn doesn't know what you're interested in. How quickly does it adapt? If I all of a sudden just did a test and I went, let's just go on a Trump park, I'm not. But like if I just went and let's just test it, how quickly will it start going? Instant. Right. You send someone a private message. Anyone who's, who's listening to this conversation, send someone a private message in your network, send Brett a private message, go ahead. And... (laughs) If you do, if you send Brett a private message, I almost guarantee it, unless you're a super, super active LinkedIn user, the next time you log into your home feed, and I do mean like you can literally then hit refresh on your home feed, your face, Brett's face is going to pop up. Right. It is that fast because there's different types of engagement. As in from my posts. Yeah, so in their feed, if they send you a private message, your most recent post is suddenly going to pop up in their feed, particularly because you're active. Do you know anything about that next layer of recruiter licenses for LinkedIn? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. You know, a lot of recruiters here will be using that to death yeah. within mails. And yeah. my view on having a very good articulated sort of like profile is that when I'm in-mailing people, mm. you know, you don't look like spam. Yep. You don't look like a, like a scammer yep. trying to yep. take, you know, your money and give it to some prince you know, yeah. over in whatever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but do you think that – will that work the same way? If, if I in-mail you mm. – well, then your feed go, oh, here's Brett. So, think so the thing that I will say, we've got to look at this in terms of a two-way relationship. Mm-hmm. So over time, what we don't want to build is a whole heap of one-way engagement, as yep. in you spamming the network with all these in-mail or private messages and no one's reciprocating. Mm. Because what LinkedIn will do is observes the pattern of behavior and goes, well, hang on, Brett's fishing for stuff here and he's not getting any responses. People start hitting ignore, people start hitting um, block, hide, whatever Mm. it is, report even, if you're going Mm. a little bit over the top. so Spam, spam. Exactly. And Mm. what that does, it puts black marks against your name and then over time those black marks build up and suddenly you disappear from LinkedIn. Or suddenly you get (laughs) told to cease and desist basically. (laughs) so You are a pest. (laughs) These these things happen. So... my honest belief, again, coming back to this is the importance of that framework. You get the purpose pyramid right. Mm. You're not trying to reach a 1,000 people tomorrow. You're not. Because if your purpose is super clear, 
there's no way you're going to try and close a deal with a thousand different candidates the next mm. day. You just you don't have the capacity. Instead, you're focusing on the next 20 or 30. Who are these people? Mm. What are my best lines to them? And remember that LinkedIn is a relationships platform. If you use it as a broadcast platform, you lose all the benefits. Mm. That includes in-mail. So the, what I would say to anyone who's relying on an in-mail strategy, just be very careful. If LinkedIn is based on relationships and relationships are built on trust, in-mail bypasses the whole thing. You lose the relationship, you lose the trust by going direct to someone who doesn't know you. Mm. So my advice to people is think of a more organic way to reach and influence that person. Mm. That's either through a referral, as in like a, a warm uh, introduction, or it's by following that person on LinkedIn. You don't need to connect follow that person, absorb their content, learn what they're about, and then um, at the appropriate time, write a comment, react to their stuff, and then send them a private message or a connection request that's appropriate and contextual. If you shoot too early, you burn that opportunity. Don't burn the relationship. It's so important. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. My head's exploding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's very good. Look, I... Um, I'm going to wrap that up. We've actually yeah. had a, a very decent chat. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to split this one up into two or just keep it as one giant um, episode because half an hour is the longest episode we've ever done. <laughs> but that goes to show how <laughs> Sorry, deep and detailed this, this topic is because we it haven't is. stopped talking. Um, <clears throat> what I love about this episode, and thank you for coming on, is that um, you've given us like, – like my brain is, is just popping all over the spot and I think a lot of people listening to this will have the same. But it's that's only as good as the work we put into it now, right? So – as I said at the start, I've worked with Roger years ago and I've known him since then. Um, he does some great stuff. So there's a couple of ways that people can get some more from you, right? Yeah. So the first, I wrote these down. So we mentioned before, you've got a podcast called Your Digital Reputation. Yep. I'll, I'll put all this stuff in the links below. So yep. where, however you're consuming this, they'll be down below somewhere. Um, that's free. You've got a newsletter you can subscribe to. That's free. By the same name. Very easy By to the remember. same name, Your Digital Reputation. So... Um, I feel like if you if if you on this podcast, that's probably a good one to to kind of nourish your mind with. But if you want to go even deeper and do the work, like actually get some program program yeah. work, like you know, help really define and tune your why and 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 how you're going to approach this, you've just launched something quite special. Yeah, a LinkedIn for Leaders online program. LinkedIn for Leaders is and it just for leaders though? No, and I think no. this is the point. Well, yes, but yep. what do you de define as a leader? And right. this is the thing: people go, "Oh, do I have to be a CEO?" No, no, no. Any single individual can be a leader. What we're talking to is the aspiration, okay. the ambition. Mm. So if I want to, if I consider myself an emerging leader, I'm someone who wants to be leading a firm. I'm someone who wants to be seen as a thought leader in my space. This is the program to help you literally chart those steps to getting there. Mm. And I think what's great, so the podcast is awesome because you've got other leader stories. So a bit like you, I'm sitting here talking to people and learning their story, giving us practical examples mm. from their lived experience. The newsletter is awesome because mm. it's then going deeper and saying, okay, we're almost decoding whatever the experience was from the leader in the podcast mm. and turning it into something practical and actionable for, cool. the, for the reader of the newsletter. What's awesome about the online program, if you're spending one to two hours a week, as we were saying before, you're spending a couple of hours a week on LinkedIn anyway. If you're not seeing return on investment, and you and I can both, both vouch for the return on investment mm. that's possible through LinkedIn, yeah. if you're not seeing that, then you're essentially wasting time. I would wholeheartedly encourage people to just, again, stop and take what is literally a couple of hours to finish this course in full. Three modules, three hours, video lessons, frameworks, examples, exercises, all that. It's only a little bit longer than this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah if people don't know yeah. this, we've actually edited it an hour and a half yeah. out. Um, <laughs> is this the program? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the whole point is if you're already investing the time, invest the time invest wisely. Properly, yeah. yeah. And, and what I'm really happy to do this for your listeners, if people have heard this and they're like, yep, I am spending time on LinkedIn, I do see the commercial opportunity, I want to get it right, Let's do a special code for Ooh, your listeners. Yep. Let's do one. Let's do a special code. We'll give people 20% off Oof. on the program. Yep. So I know we're going to include all this in the show notes, but if you go to digitalreputationacademy.com, mm -hmm. that's simple, digitalreputationacademy.com, and enter loan recruiter at checkout as a coupon code, we'll give you 20% off. What a special Simple offer. Simple as that. Just for you and your listeners. I think that's our first proper offer on this <laughs> podcast, and that just happened. So thank you. Look at this guy. I've done... Not that program, but I've worked with Roger. Can't can't tell you how important this is for everyone listening to do the work on this stuff. I want to see you popping up on my feeds in the next month, right? All right, that's all we have time for today. Guys, like, like it, share it, subscribe, follow us, whatever you're listening to. Our goal at the moment 
if you didn't know, we are on TikTok and that thing is popping mm. off. We are getting like thousand, over a thousand views per video per day. So thank you. But we really want to get the followers up. So if you are on TikTok, go and go and click that follow button, the Lone Recruiter. Our goal is to get the followership up on that because that's a platform that's loving us right now. Um, as always, have an amazing day and may all your deals come true.